We see the entire Bible as pointing to Jesus Christ and the mission of Jesus Christ. That is, we don't see the Old Testament as interesting but largely irrelevant backdrop and preface to Christ. We see the Old Testament as pointing to Christ. Uh, we see the New Testament epistles not as, well, you know, Jesus had to go through a lot of stuff, so now we can finally get to the real stuff of the gospel. Uh, no, we see the New Testament epistles pointing to Christ. Christ's mission was embraced, launched, embodied in Jesus Christ. And the New Testament epistles go on to explicate and, uh, and further the mission that Jesus embodied and, uh, and taught. Uh, both represented and preached uh, uh, about. So our approach to biblical studies sees a, a core of Jesus Christ being the center, the climax of the narrative. The epistles hearken back to the Gospels. The Gospels pick up from the prophets. Things that make God so mad are things like injustice, oppression of the vulnerable, um, ho hostility, to the disenfranchised, taking advantage of the poor. No, no coincidence that when Jesus comes onto the scene, uh, he says, I, I bring good news for the poor, liberation for the oppressed. It, it, it's part and parcel of what his gospel, what, what his mission is. And then the prophets hearken back to the ideals of the moral will of God reflected in the law. And you can go the other way. The law sets the standards portrays the character of God. The prophets are sent by God when God's people mess up. And God warns, you better repent or judgment is coming. Jesus comes on the scene when his people are under judgment and illustrates the way of God and provides the, the means of redemption. And the New Testament epistles further that message, further that mission, mission in a Jew-Gentile church that's designed to go to the whole world, including they such as you and I, uh, Gentiles, most of us, uh, from various regions of the world. We believe a missional approach also has practical implications for the, for the realm of church leadership or Christian organizational leadership. We believe a missional vision uh, sharpens and focuses the, uh, the vision of thriving, uh, vibrant churches uh, focuses that vision. We believe a missional approach to ministry uh, helps provide a means of doing turnaround ministry in dying or languishing churches. And perhaps most important of all, in a growing post-Christian, post-modern age, inspiring the missional imagination of the people of God promoting innovative, creative ways of doing ministry, some of which may never have been tried before. So fostering missional experiments. So your practical theology uh, classes will involve not just how to maintain a church and go through church functions, but uh, what kind of creative, innovative ways of doing ministry might the Holy Spirit be prompting in you yourself that you can start now or launch once you get out. Why seminary? Grounding in scripture, assessment of the times, growth and training, honing of skills for practical ministry. We believe biblical seminary does all three. Why biblical, why now? Well, now into about our uh, seventh year of revising the whole curriculum in a missional direction. Uh, we, we are now seeing enough graduates who are doing remarkable things uh, with the training they, they've gotten that uh, we believe you're getting a distinctive kind of training here that you'll find uh, it not only increases your knowledge of God and his word, but has profound impact on what you do for him in your life, your work, your ministry uh, once you graduate. We think we're getting uh, better and better uh, at it. 